one of the reasons why you and I must never in life tolerate the spirit of Jezebel. Because for the time, from time now, we've been talking about Jezebel. And uh, the Lord has uh, uh, opened our eyes to see why that spirit is so dangerous. And why we cannot afford to have it in any sanctuary. Jezebel have taken down so many churches and they're still doing the same today. But a lot of people need to understand the real reasons why it's so difficult. It's so ch challenging and why you and I must never, never, never tolerate that spirit. Because it goes for the heart of your daughters and it takes away your children from you. Thank God for the spirit of Elijah. Amen. The spirit of Elijah is all about restoring the heart of the children back to the father and also restoring the order and bringing back the altar of God. Jezebel is about putting, pulling down the altar of God. And you have to understand why God, why adultery and uh, idolatry are so terrible before God. God hates his passionately. Nothing in this world provokes the Lord more than those two. You will see the sequence in the scriptures. Idolatry and adultery. Idolatry. Now, oftentimes in our own age, in our system, we separate the two. We look at adultery and idolatry as two different things. But to God, they are the same. I said to God, they are what? The same. So when God sees idolatry, he sees adultery. And when God sees you committing adultery, he sees you as a potential idolatry, idol, idol, idol worshippers. And a tie aid to witchcraft. And it tie it to evil and wickedness. You will see the same pattern in the entire Bible. And you see why God so reacts so badly to that spirit. Because it's directly against God. God hates it so passionately. It is. Let me, let me show you some scripture. Go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Let's quickly read. Amen. Jeremiah 3. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I reject. I reject any spirit of idolatry or adultery. Say amen. Jeremiah 3, let's start from verse 1 to 9 quickly. I'd like you to see the mercy of God, the kindness of God. Our God was begging Israel to return. How many of you know that Israel today was taken out? He was taken out from God's presence. God had to reject the whole house of Israel. Send them on exile. And do you know to today Israel is just coming back home gradually? The one that returned was Judah. There are two sisters, Judah and Israel. And God was complaining about idolatry. It's so terrible. So let's go read, let's read from verse 1 to 9 quick. Let's go. Yeah? Ahem. Ahem. Go ahead. That has polluted the land with what? With what? And with your what? 
wickedness and all on verse 4. Verse 3. Therefore, look at that. I want to take note of that three. Therefore, what happens? The showers are being withheld, no rain, no prosperity, strength, poverty. Two things happen when any way that spirit takes over, poverty must go there. Shame will follow. Chronic poverty. Therefore, the showers have been withholding, and there has been no, no war, been no letter rain. Thou art the poor for air, and you refuse to be ashamed. Take note of that verse. Amen. You will see two things there. All repentant from they refuse to be ashamed. They have the all for aid. What is all for aid? What is all the all for aid? It's an aid of stubbornness, all repentance. That is what uh, that spirit does to you. It makes you heavily stubborn, unrepentant. And the Bible calls that the whole. Like I said last week or sometime when I was teaching, I said anybody who is caught with that spirit, if you look at the world, you see people who are caught with that spirit of boredom, sexuality, idolatry, they are the most stubborn to repent or hard to bring to Christ. They are heavily stubborn because it's a principality. It works through the mind. And it got to leave our daughters and our children alone. Somebody say amen. Go to verse 4. Will thou know from this time crown to me, my father, that are the guide of my youth? Will live what? Will God reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken, done evil things, and, and as, as what? As thou, as thou coldest. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, as thou saying that, that as thou seen that which Basladin Israel has done. She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree. There as, and there she played what? The Lord. Now let's read verse 7 together. Turn unto me, but she returneth not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Judah also was taken away from God's presence, but Judah eventually repented. It was much easier for Judah to repent than for Israel. There are two. You, you, I don't have time to show you the difference between Judah and Israel. It's all about repentance. Amen. And the way, and that is the same way it is in the body of Christ today. Some of us can repent so easily. Some don't repent easily. Now go to verse 8. Yeah. I put her away and given her a word, a bill of divorce. Yet, her treacherous sister Judah fear not, but went and played the allot also. And it came to pass, through the likeness of her order, that she defied the land and committed what? Adultery with what? Stones and what? Stones. You see, Idolatry is committing adultery. Adultery in the sight of God. Idolatry is committing adultery in the sight of God. You are like a wife to God. You are like a daughter in Zion. So I don't know why you are still visiting Tarot homes. All of those, all of those places, eh? Or horoscope site, 
Is it going? Oh, are you are, are you come to church? You come to church. You go to all those those spiritual called natural power because you can't endure the affliction you are going through. What you are doing, you are provoking God to anger. You are provoking God to anger. You are committing adultery and idolatry. And those two things is what Jezebel is all about. Go to Revelation, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 19 to 23. Those two things is all what it's all about. That's why God was so against that spirit. And you cannot afford that spirit because it brings in poverty. It brings in poverty. It withholds the rain. It brings the entire house down to church. It takes nations down. Anyway, you see chronic poverty. Jezebel is there. The world is not working. Angels are not there. Don't deceive yourself. Idolatry and adultery, God frowns at it because it's direct towards God. If you have a family, you say you are Christian, you say you, you and your husband are going to church and you are still having another God. The Bible talk of Jacob. It said there's no strange God with him. No strange God. He said, I will lead him about. So when you are doing idols, or you are worshipping idols, you are provoking God. It brings chronic poverty. In verse 3, the Bible says, it will toll the rain, no showers. Israel was in poverty, chronic, and they went to shame. And God wrote them a bill of divorce. God separated them. Can you imagine God saved them only to divorce them? God saved them, then he divorced them. He sent them back and I don't want you anymore. That's why you and her must aid that spirit. It's a very evil spirit. very bad. It's so subtle. It goes in. Look at how many churches have closed down. And you don't know what closed them down. How many of God's children are praying every day and things are tighter than ever? It, it, it looks as if God's eyes are not upon you. know, you are in idolatry or adultery. It's worse than any other sin that you could ever think you are committing. But I pray that as I minister to you today, you pray and say, God, is there any idol still left in my own? Lord, pause them out of my life in Jesus' name. You must pray that prayer because you may not even know. That's one thing about this God. You may not know that that is an idol. You may not know that you are in adultery. It's a subtleness. But I pray God will open our eyes in Jesus' name. Amen. Because this month you are prospering. Say, Jezebel, no more. Darkness no more. I am a child of God. I'm a daughter of Zion. Say louder, Amen. Look at Re Re Revelation chapter 2, verse 19 to 23. He said, I know your works. Talking to a church of Tatura. He said, I know your works and charity and service. Are you there, verse 19? He said, I know what? Your works. I know how you are working hard. You go to church all the time. You pray. I know your charity. You give to the poor. I know your service. And your faith is very strong. And you have a lot of patience. And thy works. And how you have honored the little ones. You care about young people. The one that are last, you made them the first. You are so special. Anybody call you a good Christian. But there's something I have against you. Because you don't have the knowledge. You don't know. You are entangled. Verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou allow, thou tolerate, thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophet. What? To do what? 
and seduce my servant to do what? Adultery, sexual immorality. Now, you see, let me tell you, sexual immorality, literal one, is, I mean, the spiritual one is worse. Idolatry is adultery. It is committing fornication with stones and stocks, with idols. Idolatry is committing fornication. Your spirit is being corrupted. You are bringing God down. That nothing in the Bible provokes God more than those two things. That's why God always say a woman find adultery, they stone them. Because if you are in adultery, you could easily be an idolater. And that is what the spirit of witchcraft it does. And it's also tied to rebellion, stubbornness. It's called all, all forehead. And you see it all over the world. They rule the world. And those children of darkness, they call themselves strong women all over the world now, they want to destroy churches. They hate men of God. They hate pastors. They want to throw every church down. But you will never be a victim of that spirit in Jesus' name. He said, and to eat things sacrificed to idols. To idols. Don't think this is not happening today because now we are moved from the realm of the physicality to the spiritual world. Many believers today are still eating things offered to idols unknowingly. I was praying, I said, God, just search me. If there's any idol left in my household or in me, Lord, open my eyes to see it and watch it. Many of you can, we depend on things that are ruling our lives more than God. Anything that takes your worship, that takes your heart away from God, is an idol. So I reject idols. So I reject idols. See, so all my life, all my heart, I give to God. Now, verse 21, I give her space to repent of her fornication. And she what? Repented not. Behold, I cast her into the bed, and them that commit adultery, adultery, adultery. So, that word fornication there was adultery. Those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And then verse 23, I will kill our children with death. Say, God forbid. Let me say something about Jezebel again. I don't know why I'm saying this. I wasn't going to start the teaching on discipline by 12, 20, but just let me quickly mention that because that is what God is. Open our eyes to see and then to attack and to remove because you must prosper. You must prosper. You must do what God has called you to be. Amen. It doesn't take time. It only takes repentance. Amen. Because you have big things to do for the Lord. But that thing is robbing you of prosperity. And you think God is not working. God is not answering prayer. No, 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 no. The idols are not working. God is working. Amen. Somebody say Amen. Go to the book of 1 Kings chapter 16. You will see from verse 30, 30 to 33 that the, the king Ahab, that we all talk about last Wednesday, that what made, what took a evil to a first class evil was the marriage to Jezebel. It was a connection to that Jezebel that made King Ahab do more evil than all the kings in the land. Nothing else. There was a perpetual sin of Israel called the sins of Jeroboam, which all the other kings were doing, committing sins, worshipping, worshipping on the high hills, on the high mountains, anywhere there is hills, they go worship there, instead of Jerusalem. And that was orchestrated by Jeroboam. And that became evil unto Israel. Every king of Israel began to follow after the sin of Jeroboam. 
because they didn't want to go to Jerusalem and, con and connect their sisters, Judah. So they kept worshipping on our hills, on our mountain. And some of them were worshipping the same God. But God said, that is evil. I want you in Jerusalem. But they will not go there. And that was evil. Not because they were bad. And we also the, the kings of Israel committed evil. But when Jezebel came into Israel, he took the evil of Israel to top notch, first class. Now, it, 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 Jezebel persecuted all the prophets. They were in hiding. He pulled out all the altars of God, either on the mountain, everywhere you find any altars of God. And all the prophets were tired. Even Elijah was hiding too. Until God said, confront the prophet. And then God anointed him and then anointed Jehu to destroy Jezebel. But Jezebel threw down the altars of God, dominated the prophets of God, and they all became afraid. And God said about Ahab that you did so much evil, top-notch evil, first-class evil, more than all, just because of Jezebel. Just because of what? Jezebel. So that's, that's how, that's why you cannot afford to have that in a land your home. Amen. Say never to Jezebel. Say not to Jezebel. I mean, it will take your evil to the place of abomination. Abomination. Go eat this. Oh, you, you think oh, you, you're against liars, fornicators, those who are angry. No, 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 no. Those are little, little, little sins compared to, compared to idolatry. Idol Even a pastor, a minister, in fact, in idolatry, you are supposed to stone them. A prophet whose word was correct yesterday, you discover he has, that God, you stone them. But not literal story, amen? Amen. Say amen in the name of Jesus. Now let's read that place again, verse chapter 16, from verse 30 to 33. Let's go. Yeah. And he went and saw Baal. Uh, and he worshipped Baal. Because Jezebel was a priestess of Baal, um, uh, a prophetess of Baal, and brought it to Israel. And dominated the king. Is that verse 33? Okay, let's go. Hmm. And let's all read that verse 33 together. And Ahad made a grow. And Ahad did more to provoke the Lord God to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. That will never be your portion. How will you ever provoke God? Provoke God. More than everybody else. To anger. You can handle that. So, no, God forbid. That's why you must wake up and say, no. What is provoking God in my life? Idolatry? I don't want it. Not in Chogi. Amen. Not in this, not on this altar. Because rain will not fall. Prophecy will fall to the ground. Effort are wasted. Because God is just silent. It's not the little fornication. It's not your telling lies or your temperament. No. It's not your oversleepiness and weaknesses. No. When it comes to idolatry, thou must not go. Amen. But that is exactly where Jezebel will take you. 
to eat things offered to idols, to pollute the sanctuary of strength, to make light the word of God. You see, when you marry to Jezebel, you will not want to go to church again. The word of God is like nothing before you, prophets of God, like, like just like nobody. The fear of God is gone. You diminish your offering. Everything becomes like nonsense. Your heart is as bold to confront God. You can even find pastors on the road. Look at them on the, on the internet. No regard. As far as they are concerned, there is no servant of God anywhere. We are all servants of God. You are a liar. Some are called to watch for your souls. Some are going to give account for your souls. Some are called out of their field just to cater for your souls. And that is your life. That is your destiny. And you cannot do what they are doing. No matter how anointed you think you are and how knowledgeable you think you are, you cannot. That's why the Bible said, take it to the flock of God to which the Holy Ghost made you an overseer. Holy Ghost made you overseer. Amen. The Lord has work on earth to be done and he commanded some people to do it for him. But Jezebel wants them all under the rock. He wants to make sure they have nothing to eat or they all go out of the church and go back to the field. But you will not be that Jezebel in Jesus' name. You'll be the pillar of strength to keep the fire of God, to keep the altar burning. Releasing the men out of the bondage or the field of poverty. May God prosper you financially for this sake to release the men of God. Somebody say louder, Amen. I don't know why I'm, uh, I mean, I was just going to share briefly, but I just want to continue a little bit more, Amen. If I have just 29 more minutes, because now we're on timing. <laughs> the one time and now. Now look at chapter 21, verse 25 and 26. Because that spirit is going about recruit because usually that's where recruit daughters. And I believe Jezebel is the founder of what we call today's feminism movement. I understand I've been somebody who loved women and who understands the pains and the affliction women go through. But what it has become today is gradually turned into hatred for men and hatred for any minority. And once the devil hijack one of them from the world, not all feminists are Jezebel, don't get me wrong. Is the one that Satan hijacked and sent to churches. When they come in with that spirit, they go right after the altar. And most of the time, they do it unknowingly, unconsciously, beautiful, loving, kind, gentle, sometimes very easygoing people. But they fall victim. Because when they see any authority, what they see is oppression. What they see is dominance. So that spirit rises in them and say, kill him. That will never be your portion in Jesus' name. Look at verse 25 and 26. Let's all read together. With, with Jezebel is where what? Stirred up. Who stirred up? 
What sin, what evil did Ahab commit? He did much evil. You would think Ahab is just like a criminal, right? No, he wasn't a criminal like that. It was the teaching of Jezebel to eat things offered to idol, to make God light. He will come and say, what do you mean by all the sacrifice? Just eat it. doesn't matter. It does, for Jezebel, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters in the body. It's called hordom. No value for the things of God. No value for God. Jezebel will make your God secondary in your home. And so you know what? God is everywhere. Let's go and have our, 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 our worship in the pool. That's Jezebel's voices. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't need to go to a pastor. You are a man yourself. Why don't you just pray for yourself? You want neighbor's vineyard? You can get it. I'll get it for you. Jezebel will water than anything that has value before God. Offering to a tithe, to honor, to the anointing, to serve it to church. Because with Jezebel, everything is light. About now the Bible says the lightness of our hordom, the lightness of our hordom. No value for nothing. Our anointing is in service. A Jezebel spirit can walk right through it and say, What you're not? I'm living here. I gotta go. Don't leave the service now. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. She will just or he. It's not only she. He can he just walk out. And that's where it's heavy on the churches of God today. Until you look at the internet and say, what is happening? Why is Jezebel just devaluing the things of God? And listen to me, the only thing that can make a prophet so powerless is dishonor. If you want to destroy the anointing of any man of God, dishonor him. It can never function any way that dishonor. It is impossible. Pro, pro, cannot. Even the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, the most powerful, could not even function in his own country. He only healed a few and he left. Anywhere Jezebel is, God is on the ground. God is dishonored. Say, God forbid. Say, no man in this world. Say, no man in this world will put my God down. Say, amen. Say, louder, amen. That was Jezebel. So let's read to verse 26. Have we read it? Yeah? Yeah. It did abominable. It was a spirit of autumn, of stubbornness, unrepentant until destruction. That same spirit took Israel out of God's presence. God gave them a divorce, a bill of divorce. The Lord will never divorce us in Jesus' name. May his presence never leave the sanctuary in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Say not in my household. Not in Joge, not around me. I'll reject the spirit of Jezebel. Any spirit that says God is common, I'll reject you in Jesus' name. Any spirit that says you must not seek the Lord, I'll reject you in Jesus' name. Any spirit that says any other God is equal to God, I'll reject you in Jesus' name. Spirit of idolatry and adultery. I reject you. How? Somebody say, man. I have just 15 minutes more. Let's talk quickly about mental discipline. Can